And by the end of the night, you couldn't tell what was piss and what was Prosecco. And we're live. You are now listening to Radio Rufus. Hello and welcome back to Radio Rufus. This is the pinnacle of broadcasting history coming at you every week on all major platforms. We're bringing the greatest, the latest news, sports, games, tunes from around the big wide world. Though some of the scoops might not be as fresh as you'd imagine because of course... As usual, we are here radiating in the vintage glory of our 1960s studio. And by we, I mean me, the eloquent debonair Rufus Rice, and my rough and ready producer, Aizen, of course, the leprechaun. Hello. These are the headlines, then. A Ukrainian refugee has returned to Kiev due to the condition of her Swansea council house. A Brooklyn pastor named the Bling Bishop is found guilty of spending 90,000 of his parishioners' savings on luxury goods. The son of a Brazilian OnlyFans model has admitted he films her content for her. And Amazon has told its warehouse workers to close their eyes and think happy thoughts. All of that to come, as well as the sports, weather, and a brand new segment this week. Uh, which we'll get to later. Very exciting stuff, but our first story, let's get into it. It's not news. A Ukrainian refugee has returned to Kiev this week due to the appalling condition of her Swansea council house. 35-year-old Kiev native, and this is it's one of those ethnic names with a spelling I've never seen before. I will give it a go, though. Tasha. <laughs> left Wales for her war-torn home country last week as it, quote, felt like a better option. <laughs> Uh, don't blame her. She'd arrived in Swansea via Poland in June 2022. What a tour that is, by the way. Kiev, Poland, Swansea. <laughs> it's like the worst leg of gigs that you <laughs> could ever do. Yeah. It's the graveyard gig. <clears throat> and she initially lived with a family as part of the Homes for Ukraine scheme. After some time, she began to look for independent housing. As a single mother with a frozen bank account, she wasn't exactly a renter's dream. But eventually she was offered a house. However, it was in such poor condition, she returned to Kiev for a better quality of life. (laughs) She said, There were a lot of holes in the walls and the floors. It smelt of dog wee and the radiator was leaking. To be honest, the basement in Kiev was in better condition. I don't want to call her ungrateful. Like, I get that it's not ideal, especially with, like, having a young baby, but surely it's better than returning to fucking war Gotta be war better than Kiev. Ukraine. I think, personally, I could put up with a hole in my door. I'd exchange that for the chances of not having a missile land on my house. Yeah. A hole in the door is better than a hole in your head. Yeah, exactly. And also, it's... She's bringing it back... Like the the infant child back to face off against a pile of like Ivan Dravo look at Ivan Dravo Ivan Drago looking Russians instead yeah. of just taking a trip down to B and Q like a bit of plaster a bit of paint the the place would be as good as new yeah I'd rather go to B and Q than the front lines of the Russo Ukrainian <laughs> war <You're- laughs> yeah you've got to question her decision making here and you know I I feel for her she's in a tough spot here however you you can I I lived in a uni house. Yeah. Right? That was in a similar condition. Yeah. And I got through that. I didn't move to Kiev during that year. I lived in a place in Belfast called the Holy Lands, which is like notoriously... That's a, that's a hugely ironic the name. The fucking roughest area in the city. Uh, our front door, you couldn't close the front door without a lump of the plaster mould above the door falling on you. Like you were taking a chance every time you entered your house that you were going to get hit with a lump of your ceiling. <laughs> And yeah. we didn't have heating. There's one winter that was like really bad and the heating just never worked and we all put the fucking oven on 180 for 20 minutes and just all sat around the oven just for yeah. a bit of heat. Nice. That was definitely worse than this. And she's fucking off back to Ukraine over like a bit of broken plaster in the wall. My uni house, right? I made the terrible mistake of not looking at it before I moved in, <laughs> right? I walk in and my bedroom, firstly, it's fucking bunk bed. Uh. <laughs> That's rough. And so it's a bed and then underneath it is the desk. Mm. And I'm not shitting you. The clearance between the the ceiling and the bed was was no greater than sort of that. (laughs) You're very limited to your positions there. If I'd woken up with a boner, it would have been scraping the ceiling. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to say. Like bored a hole in the roof. (laughs) Also, not a shag pad. You can't bring girl back to that. Nah. What position can you do? There's none. You could you could do spoon and a squeeze. Yeah. 
But even then, like, surely your size just, you're going to get fucking friction burn from the Friction burn on the hip. Yeah, Yeah. I was thinking about that. And, like, I mean, missionary, absolute no-go. Because, like, (laughs) you move up a slight bit, concussion on the back of the head. It really limits any sort of thrusting you can do. Yeah, it's lateral thrusting only. It would be, like, fucking will and in-betweeners where you're just, you're not really getting much behind it. You're just kind of, like, moving back and forth ever so slightly. Yeah, he doesn't quite get the the traction, does he? Nah, not at all. Um, um, <laughs> so it was definitely that whole year was only away games all season for me. <laughs> 38 away fixtures yeah no home um, fixtures no home fixtures absolutely not and um, there was a desk allegedly underneath it that was two cabinets with uh, a sheet of glass between them loose as well not fixed to anything so I was thinking whenever you first mentioned the desk that that could be a good substitute for the bed but if it's made of glass that's a fucking risk that's a risky move yeah, I was like, this is getting shattered yeah. immediately. I, I eventually, I, we dismantled the bed yeah. and fitted a smaller, tiny one into the corner. Good it, was still, it was still a minuscule, minuscule room. Yeah. But, you know, we got through it. Unlike um, Tasha here, uh, images of the house show damaged walls, no paint or wallpaper, no carpets, no window blinds, and all surfaces covered in mould and rust. The council had previously said, and this is... Just classic council here. The kitchen and bathroom has been upgraded. Walls have been freshly plastered and painting and decorating materials have been provided. Look at the state of the place. (laughs) (laughs) That place has has never seen a lick of paint. It looks like Guantanamo Bay. (laughs) (laughs) That is rough in fairness. It's not great, but... Again, like I get. I feel like it's better than a pile of Ukrainian rubble. You're not facing off against fucking Putin and the boys every time you go for your shopping. Like no. surely it's better. You're not. You're not at immediate risk of death. I think it says a lot about Swansea, though. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> wait to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, imagine I made a joke uh, a few months ago about um, Gaza residents being evacuated to Newport and then going back home, <laughs> and it's ironic how life imitates art here. Mm. And she's decided to go back. No, I I don't want to come across badly here, but if I'm being totally honest. I'm not signing up to the Homes for Ukraine scheme. I'm not having a rando in the gaff. And I have a spare bedroom, so I've got a space. But... <laughs> it, I, don't, I don't get why that is controversial. It, it shouldn't be. I've got a spare bedroom. Yeah. I will say that. I have a spare bedroom. I'm not on board with the... I just like my personal space yeah. a bit too much. You don't want a Ukrainian taking over your like music studio? Well, I don't mind them having a go, yeah. but if they're just using it all the time, yeah. I when have, I want to have a jam... I don't have a spare bedroom. I do have a balcony, but even it, like, I don't I don't like the thought of random strangers knocking about in my kitchen. Like, yeah. And it is, people will be like, oh, that's not fair. All the people that are up in arms about it don't have fucking Ukrainians on their sofa. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's always the like keyboard warriors being like, "Oh, you shouldn't say that." They're not posting up any Ukrainians. Also, I know I know what the long term is here. Like, you're not really looking to return to Ukraine no, never. in the near future, so you're going to be around for a while. And I'm just not sure there's we would have a whole lot to talk about. I feel like there's not a lot of sort of cultural crossover in our lives. Yeah, yeah. No, but no, but the clutch goes. And sorry, I don't know what that is. The boxers. Oh, they're Ukrainian. Pretty sure they're Ukrainian. Yeah, Vitali and Vladimir Klitschko. They're like heavyweight champions. And Zinchenko, the left back for Austria. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say Zinchenko. Yeah, who's Zinchenko that? Who's the there. West Ham player? He's Ukrainian. Is he? You thinking Kufal? Because he's not. I don't think there is a Ukrainian at West. Nah, they did because uh, every, uh, he, sco- he scored a goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's everyone long was gone. Mental. Oh, yeah. he's long gone. He used, is he? To be, he used to play for West Ham though. Yeah, I no, I don't want to. I don't want to be mean or anything. Yeah, there's only so long I can talk about Arsenal left backs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get yeah, fucking very long, very quick. There's a bit in the article that reads: After realizing the quality of life in Kiev would be poor, she returned to renovate. The house. <laughs> what the fuck was she expecting? Is she forgetting why she left in the first place? Like, it's not as if Wales is a fucking tourist hotspot for Ukrainians. Yeah. She left because her country was invaded by the, the Ruskies. 
I, I would have thought there's a lot of nice places to stop off on, on the way to Wales. But... <laughs> <laughs> she passed through a lot of slightly less shallow places. Yeah. I mean, the north of France, Normandy is lovely at this time. She would, she would love that. Just sort of baguettes, camembert, cucumbers every day. They've got a huge, you know, state-sponsored welfare program. So mm-hmm. I'm sure she'd be better looked after than she is in this country. Uh, but anyway, um, Tasha, if you're watching, um, come back. I think you made the wrong call. Next up, a Brooklyn pastor named the Bling Bishop, great name, is found guilty of spending 90,000 of his parishioners' savings on luxury goods. Lamore, the Bling Bishop Whitehead, was convicted in federal court on Monday of spending a congregation member's pension and attempting to extort a businessman by fraudulently claiming he had connections to the New York City mayor. Whitehead told his parishioner that he would use her money to buy a home and invest, but instead spent it on luxury suits. He asked the businessman in question for half a million dollars in exchange for favourable connections to the New York City government. He has no connections to the government. Of course he doesn't. During the trial, he lied to FBI agents saying that he only has one phone when he actually possessed two. I'm surprised he's only got two, to be honest. Maybe he's lying, <laughs> he's lying again. <laughs> he's better you can't. You got me. I've got, I've got two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Can you pull up some images of this guy? Because I, can indeed. I wasn't even aware that items this luxury could be purchased. He is constantly rocking like the full logo print Fendi suits, yeah. Louis Vuitton suits. And I've got to be honest, I don't want to victim blame here, but if I'm a member of a congregation or if I'm looking to join a church and the bishop is wearing Gucci, that's a red I'm, flag. I'm sensing some warning signs already. I, yeah. I feel like this guy might not be the holiest of men, if you know what I mean. I feel like his priorities might be in the wrong place. Mm. I feel like he doesn't put Christ above everything else, which is, you know, requirement number one for a bishop. Yeah, it is. The bling bishop is hands down the coolest name I've ever heard, by the way. It's, it's like a darts, a darts name, isn't yeah. it? The bling bishop. Um, I find it ridiculous as well that the people just believe that he had all these connections. Like, can you imagine over here, if you just started sprouting, like, oh, I've got all these connections and high like political places there would be 25 jay cartwright allegations through a jay before you even finish the sentence <laughs> yeah that's true buy they buy fucking everything in america that's true yeah in america america might be the only country in the world where the west ham under 13 story would just get taken yeah yeah I believe it Hands i down. could tell an american that i was chinese i reckon they might believe me <laughs> i've got a shot <laughs> i've got a shot <laughs> you know what's crazy about this guy is it's not the first time he's hit the news for something. So he last made the headlines when it was reported in 2022 that he and his wife had been robbed of over 1 million in jewellery. I can see why he was doing the crime. He needed to get the money back. You got to... <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to break even. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just a humble guy trying to make a profit. <laughs> um, this happened whilst he was preaching, incredibly. A gang of men sitting in the congregation pulled a gun on him and nicked all of his ice, like mid-sermon. Fucking hell. And then they just dipped. Mm. They haven't been apprehended, despite the fact there's actually a recording of it happening. Of this happening, because the church cameras were on. Caught it. They caught that, but they didn't catch him fucking scamming people for years. No. Uh, What I find absolutely incredible is, is he not turning up to deliver the sermon? Seeing like seven blokes in balaclavas sitting at the back and thinking, I haven't seen... Hey, yeah. must be picking up steam. Word of mouth. <laughs> so we've got some yeah. new members in today. Our like parish priest was the most passive aggressive prick going. Like you would go to like you'd maybe go at Christmas and stuff like that, and he'd walk past and be like, "Oh, it's good to see you here. You're not here often now." Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. real prick having a dig. So if if this was a real priest, he would know everyone. He'd be taking fucking tally charts of everyone's attendance. Yeah, just to hold that against them. So, wow, the, the the tastes and fashions are changing. I haven't seen so much hood rich in the con- in the congregation. <laughs> yeah. They all turn up in in sort of ballets and <laughs> <laughs> usually it's, I don't even know what you call the big robe thing, but I wonder. Do you reckon he's just storing Mon- all like this? Montclair jackets and stuff? <laughs> That's what this fucker's wearing. But Fucking do you reckon? Best trainers. <laughs> do, do you reckon he's just storing all these stolen goods in the what do you call the thing in the tabernacle? 
Okay, let's start with um, my first question. What the fuck's a tabernacle? It's it's the funnest word to say in history, but it's also the thing that... Is that spelt right? I can't even see that No, far. it's not even close. No, that actually is. You've dropped a K in there somewhere. Uh, it's, what you've written is tabernacle. Right, yeah, well, that's not it. It's this thing. So it's like in the Catholic Church, it's where they fucking store... It's basically a mini fridge for right. the, the body of Christ <laughs> and the wine that they yeah. give you whenever you're taking like your communion. Also, he has this thing kitted out with fucking ice. They've done... I don't know who's in charge, who does the PR for Christianity, um, but they've done an incredible job calling that the bread. Yeah. Those fucking crackers. <laughs> it's, 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 ba- it's barely a cracker. It's just... It's, it's a cracker you get from a Chinese before it's put into the, the fryer. <laughs> it's a prawn yeah. cracker. Yeah. It's an uncooked prawn cracker. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah. It looks the exact same. And also, that wine is fucking grim. Yeah, I've never actually had the wine, but... Again, like, I I went to a Catholic chapel in Ireland, and yeah. a lot of the stereotypes aren't true, but some of them, sadly, are very, very true. To, you, all I know is getting touched, really. Yeah. That's the main one. I personally didn't get touched. Our parish priest didn't touch children, but he did, like, kick the fuck out of them. Like, he got yeah. he got sacked for, like, the physical abuse of children. Yeah, it's 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 a fundamental just, just format problem within the Catholic Church. If they... I think we could solve um, the paedophilia problem within the catholic church if they just told the priests you don't have to be celibate right yeah because humans aren't designed to be celibate no, not at all. so it's going against your natural instincts and so you think well you know i still want to do a bit of business but if i do it as an adult people are going to find out so <laughs> that's the that is the logic that priests use i think that's just that's just a fact though. yeah so if the Catholic Church just chilled out a bit, and Pope Francis, I am addressing you directly. Thanks for watching. Um, just do, do that one simple change and we'll solve all the diddling forever. Leave oh, cool. a comment down below, Pope Francis, if you actually are watching. We could do it getting the comments up. Yeah, and we'd love to have you on the show if you want to come on. Yeah, that guest cam can find yeah, out. Yeah, we've, we've got a guest cam we've never used. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have... We don't have wine, but there's like eight bottles of tequila rose in the Chloe versus the world set that we can bring in. I think the I think the Pope loves tequila rose. You'd imagine so. Yeah, yeah. That would be like if if Christianity was invented today, that would be the drink of choice. <laughs> yeah, baby Guinness. It's the right color. Yeah, that that tequila rose. Like, it, I'm, I'm not saying it's exactly the same flavor profile, but I think it could pass in a pinch. Mm. You know, like when the the, the um, church has a service and they're like, "Oh fuck, we forgot we forgot <laughs> the altar wine." Okay, pop down pop down Sainsbury's local. See if they've got any tequila rose. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely been used as a substitute and if it hasn't it's fucking gonna be at some stage yeah. <laughs> tequila rose and cheddars <laughs> <laughs> how far do you reckon we're off like the the drink at a certain mass service being sponsored oh that would be awesome yeah can you imagine like, like <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna happen someday <laughs> what like like um barefoot wines <laughs> Just so the pre- this service is brought to you by Barefoot Wine. <laughs> <laughs> he does an ad read before yeah. the servant. Ah, <laughs> oh, he goes like, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirits. And yeah, like nice. Of yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Man, I always think it would be funny if, like, um, historical landmarks got a brand deal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the the Toblerone pyramids <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, that. If that was a bank or, back then, it 100% would have happened. What's a, what's a company that's got a lion as a look? Like the MGM Sphinx, mm. if you know what I mean. <laughs> Premier League? Oh, yeah. The like, Barclays Premier League. Yeah. Imagine the Premier League sponsoring the Sphinx. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it makes much financial sense for them. It could happen. Personally. Anyway, I feel like we've slightly got off topic here. <laughs> What the fuck were we even talking about? Oh yeah, the, the bling, bling bishop. bishop. <laughs> the bling bishop. Um, We've just slandered the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be allowed back. I'm going to go home at Christmas and be like, ah. Okay, so to catch us up on the story, he'd scammed someone out of money, he'd lied to a businessman, he'd lied to the FBI, and last year, or the year before that, he'd had all his uh, jewellery stolen by a gang of people. And that's not even the first time... He made headlines because the year before that, um, he claimed to be a spokesman of New York City subway murderer Andrew Abdullah and offered to negotiate a surrender between the killer and the police. 
Uh, Abdullah was ultimately arrested before anything could be negotiated, and uh, no connection has been identified between the bishop and the murderer. It sounds like he fucking done it. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to, that's the best alibi of all time. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I know the I'll murderer. Yeah, yeah. I know, mate. It's him. Yeah, yeah. Do you think they're mates? He's just like throwing him under the bus yeah. for a laugh. Yeah. That could potentially be the case. I feel like this this guy's got, well, I was going to say he's got looser morals than I would expect from a bishop, but we've, we've already been down that road. <laughs> yeah. Right, on to our next story then. The son of a Brazilian OnlyFans model has admitted he films her content for her. Former finalist of, and I wasn't aware this was a competition until recently, but I will be looking into the next iteration, Miss Bum Bum Brazil. Andressa Urak has made the transition to becoming an OnlyFans legend in her native country. Though relatively unknown outside of it, she boasts 3 million Instagram followers, which is pretty good. Her biggest international claim to fame, so I don't know if you're aware of this story, but um, she once received uh, death threats from Cristiano Ronaldo after publicly disclosing an alleged affair between the two. That's a nice change from Ronaldo, to be fair. Usually he just pays them, like, lump sums of hush money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, well, so you think, nice tactical switch up there after the after he got bored of the, um, the, lump, the lump sums, he's <laughs> yeah. transitioned to death threats. Yeah. It's a nice tactical change there. Yeah, it, sort of, it takes the heat off him. It's so funny, this quote that she said about Ronaldo, right? She said, speaking about the night they, uh, their, uh, they consummated their affair, she said, quote, Imagine, who am I? I'm with the second best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, honestly, huge respect yeah, for that. Yeah, she though. knows who the real guy That's is. That's so funny. <laughs> She said, he called me and he asked, are you, are you really Miss Bum Bum? He wasn't aware of the competition either. <laughs> and she was thinking, well, this is a unique opportunity, right? After we hooked up, I was uh, locked away in the hotel room. I couldn't speak to anyone. It was tense business. Of course, none of this is relevant to the main story at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that is hilarious. Yeah, that is mental. Um, it was revealed in a Q&A this week that all of her pornographic content since she began OnlyFans is filmed by her son, Arthur. Um, in response to being asked whether he filmed it, he replied, Yep, I'm really badass with the pictures, right? The duo are often seen about town, hitting the clubs together. And that last sentence worries me because it's starting to get a bit incesty there. It really is. I wouldn't in a million years want to hit the clubs with my own mum. Nah. Just out of pure embarrassment. The, over here if, I don't want to see her pumping up the jam no nah, not at all at all he sees that on a daily basis without saying it in her club appearances as well yeah <laughs> I saw that not only does he take the photos but he also tells her what position she should do and what oh. scenes they need to shoot oh, it just what scenes worse. they need to shoot sorry this pervert is 100% fully bricked up watching his mum monetize her minge yeah oh, it's absolutely disgraceful and here's another little detail which just makes it even more disturbing is that she's only 36 and he's 18 yeah. and they didn't start it this year that is fucked that's illegal she's been she's been doing it for two and a half years oh uh, and i don't i don't everything. think she Actually, she's transitioned yeah. from a tripod to her son let's just say that I just I, I want to know where the lines are drawn because if he is already doing like live punditry as his oh come out and say it I think they're shagging yeah they they have to be who's to say he isn't getting further involved than just offering up his advice on what position should I've be seen next I've seen media that operates along these lines before yeah I've seen well I guess it's sort of stepmom except she's just your mom isn't it mm. like the I, I get what you're saying about the clubbing thing like. The amount of shit you would get over here if your mum just still went clubbing by herself. Never mind you, her fucking content creator son. There, there are, there's sort of a genre of girls who go clubbing with their mums on like a mum's thing. And often you see it at a hen do. It's much more acceptable for women to go clubbing with their mum. Imagine going clubbing with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on nights out with my dad at like football yeah. dues and stuff. That's grand, but I don't know, going on a fucking club night with your... Ah, that's, that doesn't sound... I once went to a Slovakian casino with my dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was not meant to be a punchline or anything. How did, it's, just, it's just so random. It's just a gen genuine story. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, we had a, we had a good time and stuff, but there, it is a unique feeling. You sort of see a new side of your dad when you're both just sitting there losing money. Yeah. Yeah. And also, that casino uh, was just full of Chinese people. 
just just and I think they were in the triads sort of Chinese gang members but I wasn't aware there were that many in Slovakia, in Slovakia yeah. yeah I didn't realize they do love a gamble though yeah they love it they absolutely love it I would understand that like over here there's like lots of them yeah but Slovakia I wouldn't be thinking that would be a big hotspot for the Chinese I oh, love it it's like, yeah. it's like Chinatown <laughs> <laughs> there's loads, loads and loads um yeah, anyway, right, let's get back to the main story. So, Andressa, re- recently she took a hiatus. She's mm. like, I'm done with OnlyFans. And the reason she did that was to rekindle her connection with God. Maybe Ling she- Bishop. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. Maybe she's, she got scammed out of the money because um, she filed a lawsuit against the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God and asked for her two million real donation to be refunded they didn't give it back uh yeah i sort of assume so i think if you're it's like asking a charity for your money back i think once once you've given it it's gone there in that situation yeah there's nothing you can do they don't fuck around in the church yeah but so she took a break to get back with god and then returned two months later and employed her son to take the pictures i don't know i've Actually, God does like a bit of incest. Yeah. If you think Adam and Eve is historically accurate, then... True. They had to be brother and sister, and they were fucking... Well, they're both they're both made by God. Yeah. Right? And if you think about their kids, what are you going to do? Shag the snake? <laughs> I, I have to say, if I was Adam and Eve, if I was one of their kids, who do have names, but I can't remember them, I think I might be hollowing out the apple and just plowing that. Yeah, it's a safer show. I'd be coring it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to get involved in the family business. Can you imagine if Adam and Eve, if that is the case? There's so many families that, like, like my mum had six lads. My mm-hmm. granny had five boys. Imagine Eve just kept shitting out men. Yeah. Like, that would just be existence finished before it even started. They were taking a gamble there. Yeah, they yeah. really were. I'm... All I want in the Garden of Eden is a swing ball. As long as we've got one of those, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, that would keep you entertained for... I'm actually good for a... Sh- I'm, I'm, I'd be okay. No shag, I reckon. Just a swing ball would keep me happy. Uh, I wonder what Adressa Urak feels like about swing ball. Probably loves swing ball. Plays it with her son. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know we've already seen some of it, but uh, there's been like articles of children being brutally bullied at school. Because like they're mad as OnlyFans, the yeah. fallout from this in like five to ten years is gonna be absolutely mental. I'm just worried about how proud he is about it. Yeah, he's boasting about how good the pictures he takes of his <sighs> own mum's sausage wallet. <laughs> Do you remember as well in school the amount of shit you got if your mum just didn't look like a dinner lady, like if she just was if if, if someone's if, mom- if she was not. Absolutely butters. Yeah. yeah. Like this. But you would still get shit if your mum was ugly as well, because people call your mum <laughs> ugly. So, yeah, it was really no winning. Can you imagine, though, how vicious the attacks would be if, like, during dinner time, your classmates could, like, chip together their lunch money and by the end. Subscribe of, to your mum's yeah, growler. They yeah. have a photo of her minge in the next period. That would be fucking. There, there's no coming back from that. I think it is cruel. That I, oh. The thing is, 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 it will happen with increasing frequency, won't yeah. it? Because. Like how how old are the first? The, let's call them the OnlyFans generation. I like that term. Yeah. How nice old how old are those kids now? How old is OnlyFans and that sort of thing? Let me get that up. Is is it? It sort of. I'm thinking sort of 2017, 2018. And if you have a kid, then 2016. 2016. Eight. Okay. Eight euros are like they're a couple of years off secondary school. Yeah. So yeah, if your mum gets ploughed for money, then tough. It's tough. fucking curtains for you in the in the. Dinner time and stuff like that, you're fucked. Our next story then. Amazon tells warehouse workers to close their eyes and think happy thoughts. Evil global conglomerate Amazon Incorporated launched a program aimed at, well, they say it's for wellness, but really it's for indoctrinating their workers. And it's called Amazon, like chill, Amazon. Makes you think of sort of Japanese gardens, cherry blossoms and that sort of thing. Master Ugwe, maybe. Um, this launched in 2021, and it's designed for the, to distract you from the fact that you're a corporate slave working in a concrete jungle for a bald megalomaniac and being vastly underpaid for it is basically what it's for. Yeah. Um, 
it says it provides well-being activities, meditations, positive affirmations, etc. Uh, one particular exercise got leaked this week. It's called savoring. Um, it instructs employees to close their eyes and think about something that makes you happy. That's the whole slide. Can you actually bring up the slide? Do you have the article? Ah, there we go. That's the picture I wanted. That's it. That so, looks like the fucking old Xbox 360 dashboard. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's in live chat. <laughs> this is... Let's let's just look past the fact that about how shit, how poorly designed this PowerPoint slide is. It looks like something you'd make in year six. Yeah. He hasn't even changed the fucking font. Every one of these Amazon articles are, like, without fail, more dystopian than the last. It is so fucked up reading them. Yeah. So, look, it, it looks terrible. Yeah. And the exercise itself is beyond shit. I don't know what sort of like, wellness company they brought in to um, design these programs, yeah. but they need to get a refund because the whole exercise is close your eyes and think about something that makes you happy, which if you're an Amazon worker is probably death <laughs> <laughs> yeah also did, you, did also, you see the mindful practice rooms okay let's have a look at the mindful practice rooms this thing oh wow <laughs> it's not that a, looks like a, <laughs> looks like a bog at a fair <laughs> <laughs> it's not a room at all it's a fucking coffin sized phone box yeah and this is what they're meant to go into there's like a description of it so they it, carry the queen around that. <laughs> yeah, that that's at, actually spot on at the funeral like that, yeah Inside the practice room includes a small desk with a single monitor, a few shelves with plants, yeah, a small fan, and a skylight meant to imitate a bright blue sky in case employees forget what that looks like during exhausting lengthy shifts. That sounds like my university room. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the same thing. A bit more daylight in this thing. <laughs> about, about the same size as well. Imagine if that woman had come all the way from Ukraine and got one of those bad boys. <laughs> I would have understood. I would have understood her shipping herself back then. But yeah, yeah. What's great about that is you can just ship the whole thing. You don't even need to leave it. Yeah, her in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> How many employees at Amazon headquarters do you reckon has had a wank in these things? I was gonna like yeah. that's got to be. It's not a mindful practice room, is it? If it was rebranded as a, a wank practice. station, <laughs> yeah, it would be fucking. There'd be no negative. It's a crack HR. off cubicle. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that Jeff Bezos scrotum looking prick clock in for one of these like lengthy shifts. Yeah. Just to see how he gets on. Man, says, I reckon he'd be shit. Yeah, absolutely. Sitting up in his yacht while his employees are instructed to listen to positive affirmations just to stop them from offing themselves. Yeah. I've just got some statistics to illustrate this. Amazon has the highest rate of injuries among major warehouse based firms. So last year, a 20 year old died after his head got trapped in some machinery. Fuck. Um, Amazon, a company worth $1.8 trillion, was fined seven grand for that. Seven grand. Imagine someone putting the price of your head, seven yeah. grand. And if you think about it in terms of proportion of how much they're worth, right? So if you include my student loans, like that is a tiny, tiny percentage. That's like me killing someone and then someone paying me like 50p. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about proportion proportion of net worth. <laughs> In 2022, a 61-year-old woman died of a heart attack on the warehouse floor and they forced everybody else just to carry on working while they me. while the managers just disposed of the body. Your average story you hear coming out of an Amazon warehouse is fit for a Black Mirror episode. Yeah, I'd rather be a prisoner of war. They get paid more. You've got no expectations as well. I think you've got better earning potential as a prisoner of war because at least when you get out, you can write a book about it. Yeah, and your acronym's pretty cool. Pow. Yeah, I've always thought that. It is. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. It makes me think of sort of Mario Kart. Yeah, or like a comic strip, like sixties Batman. Yeah, which is very cool. <laughs> it's, it's the shittest thing ever, but no, no, that's. I think that's a salient point, though. Like. Pa P POW, yeah. like, as is written down, P-O-W, is a lot cooler than actually being a prisoner of war. Moving on to our next segment then, it's Snatch of the Day. This is our sports review of the week. And uh, the world's ugliest dog contest uh, got announced this week. It takes place every year in Petaluma, California in June. 
Along with the highly coveted prize of World's Ugliest Dog, the winner receives 1600 bucks and a trip to New York City. Pretty good. There are two divisions in the competition, one for pedigree dogs and one for mutts. The two winners of the divisions then compete for the overall prize. Sort of like um, the Super Bowl or something. It sounds like the 1960 European Championships, actually. Yeah, a little bit. Owners must provide proof of vet checks to show that the animal is healthy. Uh, the competition has been dominated by Chinese crested dogs, which are basically just a minging breed. Uh, also, deformed chihuahuas and just fugly bulldogs have also won it. <laughs> there are two dogs which are three-time champions, which, that's impressive. Yeah. I didn't think it would be possible to to be ug- an, like the ugliest dog multiple times. Surely, it's like a, a lifetime achievement award, right? <laughs> it's also, it's it's not really an award you want to be winning. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want... Why yeah. does anyone enter this competition? Why would you want your dog to be clapped? If dogs had any sort of like free will and like a proper conscious I'd be fuming, knew mate. that they were winning three time winner of the ugliest mutt you would be fucked off you would not be happy about it at all and I know you aren't really a fan of dogs like whatsoever I do like I like dogs yeah. but what I fucking hate is people who pretend every dog is cute some of these things are absolute munters yeah let's have a look through them right now because we have some some proper proper um, look at look at this prick peanut that is a haunting image. Like, how could anyone want to pet that thing? Look at the shape of its back. Yeah. It's arched like Raheem Sterling, but yet there's no meat on it at all. It's a proper, <laughs> like, s- skinny hunchback. They all just look like the products of crossbreeding and incest. They shouldn't be, like, paraded around that and celebrated. trim is disgraceful. Look how lopsided it is. There's so much more hair on one side. No wonder its neck's leaning over like that, because it's so heavy on that side. I don't, I don't think that one's as bad as the <laughs> Before other. Before you scrolled down all the way, I thought a trophy had just fucking won it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's rough. Even the fucking owner's a munter. I've joked on What a joke. <laughs> That might be the, the hardest I've ever laughed on this show. Even the owner's a munter. You know, people say you do look like you're yeah. oh. This is very accurate there. Oh. It's called Mugly as well. Like, they're not Should we call it Fugly? Uh, let's have a look through some more. Okay. Jesus that Christ. That one's not that bad. Yeah, compared to the others, but it just looks like it's got. It, well, it looks unhappy. It looks disabled. It looks like the saber-toothed tiger from Ice Age in the worst way. <laughs> it looks like my first attempt at drawing the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was his name? There was Manny. I haven't was seen that the, film in a long time. Oh, uh, really? Diego. Was it? Yeah, it was fucking Diego. Diego. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, God. It's only got one eye. I wish it only had one eye so I didn't have to fucking look at it as much. Let me remind you that all these dogs have gone through vet checks to make sure they're healthy. Mate, this one must have scraped by by the skin. I would not be trusting my dogs without vet. Also, surely the world's ugliest dog is going to be unhealthy. Yeah. You would have thought, like, surely they've got to fail a vet check to be eligible for the competition. Yeah, that's not really fair. So can you imagine you're like a... A really, really ugly dog that was up and coming, like yeah. threatening to maybe breach the podium. And they're like, ah, you're not well. You can't go in. Surely they should be trying to reward the sick dogs. Yeah, because then, then they've, pop, they've put in a real effort. That's like Michael Jordan's flu game. <laughs> 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 when he was just like, he was just like shitting bricks. He was sweating yeah. buckets and he still drops like 30 points or something ridiculous. It's probably like 90 points. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like the equivalent of this in the dog world. Holy Jesus Christ. Mate, I, ha- I hate that trim. It looks like the fucking penguin from Surf's Up, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got the same trim. Fucking hell, that is rough. So, yeah. Some- it lit- you know what that looks like? You ever see Gremlins? No. The film? Really? That is mental. So, basically, there's just a series of absolutely rans- <laughs> rancid dogs. Yeah. They really they shouldn't have had this one after midnight. You know what I can't believe is that... You, you know what the attendance is for this event? How much? Tw- Twenty to 30,000 people come to this thing. That's like a championship game. It's like the O2. That is mental. Come to, me. come to Come to look at these clapped dogs. There's something for everyone, I suppose. 
I have noticed a slight flaw in this story in that is this a sport? Probably I mean, this not. This is the sports segment of our podcast. It kinds. I I think any sort of competition. Look, yeah. if, if bowling's a sport, world's ugliest dog yeah. has got to be a sport. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. Yeah. But <laughs> also, trip to New York City. That's just the most standard prize in any, like, you ever see, like, I feel like the dog's not going to appreciate it all that much. Yeah. It doesn't know. Nah. Uh. This is for the owners. <laughs> can get can leave the dogs behind for a week. <laughs> I like that there's like um a category for pedigree dogs and one for mutts and then the two leaders have to face off. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's sort of what's the equivalent? I would say it's like one of those cup finals that like Wigan gets to Yeah, it's ju- it is just like that like a miraculous run from like a league 1 team yeah. and suddenly they're playing Man City. It's like the time Portsmouth won it. Yeah. Yeah. It is like the time. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we would love to go and cover the world's ugliest dog contest. So maybe if they want to reach out and invite us, give us some tickets, then we'll do that. It'll be a sporting occasion equivalent to the glory of the 2008 FA Cup final uh, in which Portsmouth won. Now, smoothly moving on to women's football. Uh, there was a Super League fixture between Arsenal and Chelsea that was delayed by 30 minutes on Friday due to an issue with the Arsenal team socks. Now, you're a big Arsenal fan, so obviously you would know all about this story. Yeah, I heard about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, They turned up at Stamford Bridge with white socks instead of red. Chelsea, famously, also wear white socks. Now, you can't wear the same colours of socks. That's just against the rules. Despite wearing all the other kit being... totally different you can't wear the same socks Uh, and they didn't bring any other socks with them so they had to scramble to find replacements Uh, problem is you know you've got to get this match underway as quickly as possible can't exactly pop down to Sports Direct well there's probably a Sports Direct in Chelsea to be honest but they didn't do that because um, where's the nearest place if you're in Stamford Bridge where's the nearest place for you to get socks the Chelsea team shop so (laughs) do you reckon they still had the queue (laughs) <laughs> so the, the the kit people at Arsenal went to the Chelsea team shop and bought Chelsea socks, away socks, Chelsea black away socks, and then covered the logo and the like. I think what do they what? Who Tip? does Chelsea kits? Is it Nike? Nike. Yeah, I think Arsenal have someone else. Yeah. So they had to cover or that. Somebody does. Yeah, they have Adidas. So they had to cover up that as well. So they're just walking around with. Tape off the socks. It promptly just came off in yeah, many cases. The tape falls off so quick. Yeah, and um, I think I think it's so funny the idea of just directly providing your rivals with money, <laughs> especially since like in women's football the transfer fees aren't particularly high. No, nah. so you've probably got them a world class player for a team's worth of socks. <laughs> you see, you see as well. The first thing I thought whenever I saw this on Twitter, Joey Barton was rubbing his hands together. Whenever this news broke, he was thinking this is backing up every one of my points. As much <laughs> as he is a prick, he was in the money for that one. Yeah, like this would never happen in the men's football game. Like if if this was Arsenal versus Chelsea in the men's Premier League, I'm ninety five percent sure they would have just postponed the match. Really? Until they got. There's no way that's happening. I'd like to see them just play both play with white socks. Yeah. I just don't think it matters that much. Nah, not really. Not really. She said that she doesn't want to throw the kit man under the bus, but if that was me and I was in that position, his head would be parked right underneath. Who it. else are we throwing? Out? Someone's got to go. Yeah. I, you know, I don't want to make assumptions here, but I feel like the socks are the kit man's job, <laughs> right? And he had three weeks to prepare. to prepare. Yeah, nah, fuck that. He's out. And he packed the wrong socks. Especially if you're in a position in the women's football game where you're like trying to get it to a point where it's taken more seriously and then this shit happens, you would be fuming. Yeah. The kid man will be getting sacked the following morning. It's a farce. It's, 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 it's a total farce. And so the kit man, under your authoritarian regime at <laughs> the Emirates, he'd would be, be gone. He'd be yeah. gone. He'd he be beheaded. Be put to the sword. <laughs> Instead of to Kiev. <laughs> <laughs> he could live with that woman from earlier. <laughs> No, I sent him to Swansea. Oh, yeah. I'd probably <laughs> be worse. worse. Yeah. <laughs> now, we move on to the weather segment. Drizzle kicks coming at you now, and it's bad news. 
as it tends to be for all my Pakistanis out there, as your nation has been ravaged by floods over the past couple of weeks. Here are the stats. 40 dead, 62 non-fatal injuries, um, which is pretty good considering 5,483 schools have been completely destroyed. Jesus. They're pretty fucking well maintained. Oh, I assume they just had a great evacuation plan then. Oh, they're good swimmers. They've got the Frosties <laughs> badges for sure. Yeah. Definitely definitely can do 100 metres in a, in a school pool. I just want to say as well, rest in peace, burnt chip. Yep. Our prayers and thoughts are with your family. It's not all bad news, though. There are some stories of hope surrounding this great tragedy uh, because the flooding is nowhere near as bad as two years ago uh, when the legendary Great Lake of 2022 was formed in which 1,739 people died and $15.2 billion of economic damage occurred and there was a national state of emergency so you're on the up (laughs) you've got to you've got to take stock of it you've got to look at it comparatively yeah and it wasn't nearly as bad as that so you've hit you've hit rock bottom and although it's still not that great it's relatively good and i think there's a bright future out there for pakistan you've got a lot you've got a lot to look forward to i'm glad it's not us Yeah, also glad it's not us as well. The China Overseas Ports Holding Company uh, launched a rescue operation, which is nice of them. I think there's no corporate intentions behind that. Uh, And they donated relief materials, including 3,000 tins of food and, strange one here, 30,000 bottles of water. I feel like they've they've got enough water. Yeah. Maybe they send could have done with some other stuff. Send a few honest. buckets. <laughs> <laughs> they're wasting. They're wasting the, the container space on on uh, lots of water. There's loads of water. <laughs> it's not the problem at, at all. Have you ever um, had a glass of water in the bath? I've drank bath water whenever I was. That's, a child. that's, that's <laughs> not what I asked. But I've never had a glass of water in the bath. No. It's very sort of indulgent, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't mean like getting the bath water and then drinking it out of a glass. I mean. Having a, a like a, a nice glass of water yeah. in the bath. I don't know. It feels a bit wrong, but quite nice at the same time. Yeah. Sort of like um, taking a glass of water out and about with you. From that is just home. wrong. Just <laughs> just like parading around the streets, drinking your own water from home. I had a guest in another podcast the other day that came off the train with a glass of water. <laughs> No, you from didn't. his fucking house, genuinely, he walked into the <laughs> studios with a pint glass of water. <laughs> I hope, I hope he lives nearby. Otherwise, <laughs> it was a long trip. Can you say who it is? Nah, can't say. Is you, that after? <laughs> is that gonna is that gonna ruin their career? No, nah, not ruin their. But career, I feel but... like those are pretty severe allegations, though. <laughs> I think that is wrong and behaviour bringing your own water to a podcast. Yeah, especially fair enough if you're bringing a bottle. Yeah, but a fucking pint glass. <laughs> Had he like just nicked it from a nearby establishment? I would hope so, rather than him also, filling it up in a. It's kitchen. definitely a bloke. It's yeah, it, a bloke. it was. I can reveal that it was yeah. a man. So we've eliminated half the world there. We're 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 honing in. Right, moving on to our next segment then, and this one is actually brand new, new and introduced uh, for this week. I'm very excited about it. This is dispatches from Gran. So my actual grandma who um, is a big fan of the show. She's also totally deaf, so I don't know how she's sort of... She's not listening in, let's just say that. (laughs) Um, But she saw our segment, the caption's really doing a number there, uh, about the Vietnam War the other day. And she was actually alive there. So she's written in to tell us what it was like. And for a a, uh, Radio Rufus first, this is actually going to be quite informative. Uh, and probably not that funny. Can I just say as well, hello Rufus's nan, if you're listening. There's there's nothing. You can't you can't amplify zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fully deaf. I, th- I yeah. Ah, right. Sorry sorry about that. Well, the captions will read as I said. Yeah. So, actually, no, it wasn't about the Vietnam War. I've got that totally wrong. It's about the Berlin Wall. Oh yeah. So Gran has written in to share her experiences. So the Berlin Wall was constructed when the war was really coming to a head in the early 60s. Everyone was very paranoid. It's followed by the Cuban Missile Crisis, Bay of Pigs invasion, etc. Everyone was totally worried. 
about the prospect of nuclear war, the UK government actually ran a public information campaign. She says she's forgotten what it was called, which is helpful. Uh, but there was a follow-up campaign in the 70s called Protect and Survive. It's basically a series of pamphlets, TV programs, uh, adverts that told you what to do in the event of a nuclear attack, which is what everybody was worried about. So alongside this, they actually used to do civil defence exercises, government-mandated exercises that everyone would have to do to practice everyone's response, a bit like a school fire drill, mm. but much more serious. So they would set off the old air raid sirens from the war, and that was when they would go off, that was a four-minute warning. So you had four minutes to try and basically find somewhere secure, sheltered to hide. Uh, that was because the limitations of the technology and our systems at the time meant that if missiles were coming in, you had four minutes before they hit. Yeah. I think if I was in that position and a nuke was about to be dropped on me, I wouldn't want a timer counting down to my decimation. I'd rather just not know. That's the worst four minutes of your life. Yeah. Actually, no. I My virginity was pretty awkward when I was there. <laughs> Fair play on the four minutes. Good going. <laughs> Like, I, I get stressed out whenever I have a timer on, whenever I'm cooking. Like, yeah. if there was a timer counting down to a nuke, that would be fucking torment. Also, four minutes. Yeah. It's not long. You wouldn't want to be, like, playing football. It's also just long enough to give you time to think about it all. Like, if it was one minute, you'd be like, by the time you've realised what's going on, you're fucked. Four yeah, yeah. minutes is, you've thought through everything. I'd prefer... Either side of that would be yeah. much better because then you'd either have time to get safe yeah. or just die. But could they not have just made it five? <laughs> te technology limitations. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you weren't in a safe place, that meant you had four minutes of knowing you were about to die before the missiles landed. Uh, so the government put out brochures and adverts of useless advice. One that she remembers is uh, painting your windows to deflect heat. And I think if a nuclear Im missile has just impacted the nation, being a bit toasty is the least of your worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I looked up some other advice from the time period because she could only remember the one. Uh, these, this is what they suggested in the event of a nuclear attack. Using signal flags and whistles to communicate with neighbours and rescue teams. Uh, arranging transportation options, including bicycles, for evacuation purposes. I'll be honest, if I'm trapped in some rubble, I don't want a bike. Yeah. I don't... I, I, <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I don't want my, my guardian angel to turn up on a BMX. <laughs> yeah, you I'm want not the, trusting that. You want them operating a fucking crane that can free you? Yeah. Not a fucking BMX. You don't want Tony Hawk to pull up? Also, flag and whistle. Mark. Yeah, don't know. I feel like that's that's the cherry on the on the ice cream. Yeah. If you know what I mean, that's completely useless. And completely no useless. I always think about this in plane crashes because in the safety information they always go, "Here's your light and the whistle," and the light is literally like a glow worm in a jar. Like it's beyond useless. Yeah. And that whistle, you wouldn't be able to hear it in the next cabin on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone stranded in like thousands of miles of the Pacific Ocean after you've crashed into the sea. That's my worst nightmare ooh, there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank God I've got this piece of useless plastic so the Air Force <laughs> can hear me. You're just going to wake up a shark that's going to fucking feast on you. Yeah. So um, good advice from the government there. And she also said connected to this, there's a separate scare called the strontium-90 scare. So strontium-90 is a radioactive particle that when you drop bombs... It's part of the, the radiation that falls out of it and it basically poisons things. Mm. Uh, apparently... Get down! Do you have your whistle, Rufus? Those bloody Ruskies. <laughs> Are we good? Was it a test? I hope. We painted the windows so we won't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's chilly in here after we painted the windows. Oh. I think we're good. Just a test. They could have told us it was a drill. I absolutely <laughs> shat myself there. Oh. 
So there we go. We followed the advice. All worked out. We're still here. Jobs are good. The timing of that was fucking perfect. Yeah, that wasn't planned, by the way. <laughs> Fuck me. That was... I feel like I'm in the Matrix. Yeah. That was in incredible. That that was not like a, a planned bit yeah. of the show. That was literally the studio alarm going off. And our incredible improvisation skills. <laughs> but you, you looked at me like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible timing. I can't believe that has happened. Wow. It's all thanks to this. Yeah. The we have painted. actually we have actually painted the windows. If you want to cut to the wide here so you can see it. Yeah. We followed your advice, the government. And we're still alive. And we're still alive and well. So thank you very much. Have you got your signal flags? I don't know. I lost my whistle whenever I dived under the desk. Yeah, my bicycle was nicked earlier as well, so we've got no <laughs> way out. <laughs> I suppose we're just here for until our death. People do do you sort of think that I just sort of live in this area? <laughs> Which would be fine. It would be a shorter commute than I currently have, so yeah. I'm not complaining. At least it's got a carpet. It's better than that uni room. Mm, higher ceilings. Definitely more. Definitely a bit more clearance. Anyway, I just did have a brief moment there where I was thinking about shagging on this desk, but we'll move on because I do want to keep it professional in this environment. Let's go back to Strontium-90 then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's a radioactive particle that forms part of the fallout of nuclear bombs. And the rumour that went round spread like wildfire, was that Britain had conducted so many bomb tests, right, that the fallout had contaminated the grass in the pastures. Uh, and obviously the, gr the cows graze on the pastures and then pass the particles into the milk. So nobody, the milk is, milk is poisonous, mm. is basically what it was. So nobody was allowed to drink it. She said everybody ignored that. As you would. I mean, that is traditional fear mongering. I do I, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see a radioactive cow, but I'm I'm struggling to believe the the particles getting into the grass. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe that. Seems like absolute bollocks. What do you think of people that just will drink like a full pint of milk with their dinner? I mean, I re I respect it. It's it's one of those things. It's like having a really rare bit of steak where you feel like a proper caveman, don't yeah. you? You're just you're just eating like the raw ingredients. My dad does that. Like he'll just come home and just straight to the fridge, pint of milk, and. I don't know, it, it's, I'll take it with my tea and stuff, but I, I, I've never once thought, you know what, I'll take just a, a raw pint glass of milk. Yeah, no, I feel like there was a rumour around at school that if you did that, like, you'd grow tits. <laughs> we did go to different schools. Like, so. milk, milk was full of estrogen, basically, was the going thing. But I, I, I don't really like milk. I don't think my dad has tits. Does he have man tits? No. Huh? So there was that debunked. But yeah, but there was also that bullshit about curly haired bread eat crust eating. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh th no! I think this is a this is a proper one that if you eat the crusts on bread, you get curly hair. I have the most straight Asian looking hair possible, and I fucking love crust. The thing is, I like crust on bread as well, but I don't fucking want. Basically, they would say that to incentivize kids to eat the crust. I don't fucking want curly hair. Yeah, that's you. You it's got bullied the, for that. It's doing the opposite. Yeah, fuck that. So I never understood that one. Anyway, following on from ignoring advice, we move on to our next segment, Questionable, where we ask our audience an important query and we feature the best responses. So I've asked this week, what's the worst bit of advice you've ever received and what happened when you followed said advice? And as usual, my audience uh, ten tends to send in just false information trying to be funny. So we'll go through these and take all of them with a pinch of salt. Phil Jones' cousin told me to hurry up and cross the road because nothing was coming. I got hit by a car. <laughs> I like that it's Phil Jones' cousin <laughs> as well. He, he also clarified in here, the Man United defender. Yeah, just in case we thought it was all the other Phil The other Joneses. Phil Jones, yeah. And it's his cousin as well. It's not even Phil Jones. So it's, <laughs> it's not relevant to the story at all. Slightly more believable, though. <laughs> Although Phil Jones... Phil is Jones is not known for his vision as a player. No, he's not. So maybe it runs in the family. He's also known for being injured all the time, so maybe he also took his cousin's advice. They both went across the road. <laughs> um, yeah. Ne <laughs> Next up, the first time I tried a trusty tactical wank before I was seeing a bird... 
She wanked me off for about 30 seconds and then I came in her hand, then couldn't get it up for the shag, sent her home with a cummy hand. Which is a phrase I've never heard before, but... A cummy hand. Cummy hand. She could have done with that wank, the posh wank kit we had, it, like that latex rubber glove from episode Yeah, it's two. wiped clean. Where is that? Someone's took that. Has someone nicked our posh yeah. wank kit? I wouldn't care, but I'd like to know how it was. I've got suspicions in the office. Yeah, there's a few suspect-looking characters, especially that editing table. There's a few pervs at the editing table. Yeah, there is. I'd like to get to the bottom of who nicked that, because I also want... I was eyeing it up. <laughs> And it is mine, I think. Yeah, I bought yeah. it for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was a so, heartfelt... Someone's theft. stolen my property. We've got a theft case on our hands. <laughs> I don't believe this story for a second because the whole point of the tactical wank is that you don't bust in 30 seconds. Now, I know there are some guys who go, oh, I can go a few rounds in a row, mm. right? Personally... Uh, I can do two rounds in a row as long as there's like 24 hours between them. Yeah. The rounds. I mean. 24 hours? Well, maybe, or, or like a good night's sleep. Yeah. Let's say that. I'm not I'm not a uh, double-barreled shotgun, let's just say that. <laughs> I'm very much a one-in-the-chamber, old-style old musket sort built, of action. Built like a sawn-off shotgun. Built like a sawn-off, yeah. Um. So he's done the tactical wank beforehand. Yeah. And then she's seeing the bird. He's seeing the bird. She's giving him a tuggy and in 30 seconds after the tactical wank he's gone again in the hand and then, not up. and then it's gone all the way to not being able to get it up at all for the actual shag he just has what the fuck so it's, it's two quick bullets there mm. and then rapid fire it, yeah rapid fire and then just totally disabled out of action overheated no way Jose Someone threw an EMP grenade in the systems. I just feel like that's not how it works. No, not- like if I have the tactical wank beforehand, I'm struggling. I'm struggling for the second nut. There's a term for yeah. He just suffers from premature ejaculation. I was yeah. trying to think of the term there. Yeah. Like the the tactical. Wank you have a medical working. condition, is what we yeah, discovered. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You've got diagnosed on Radio Rufus. Not the first <laughs> diagnosis, and it definitely won't be the last. That is legitimate medical advice as well. I'm a qualified professional. Next up. Seat belts are for people who don't trust their driving. Got that advice. Uh, I'm. I then I got in a car crash. I'm now paralysed from the neck down. <laughs> I was gonna say that is a tragic story. Until I had a look at this guy's Instagram. Yeah, he's a professional cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> Still regularly uses wheeled like vehicles, but not the one you would have th- thought. Yeah. So this is this is how you know the legitimacy of most of these stories is fairly thin. Completely made up. <laughs> his, I looked at his Instagram, so I was like, "This guy's a fraud." <laughs> it's just it's just him on Little tricks. On, just in the fucking Tour de France, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so I, I think it's safe to say he's probably not paralysed from the neck down. Yeah. There's still probably some um, some good advice. All right, next up, the advice in question: just come out for one pint. Three years ago. On the face of it, not so bad. I am now £2,000 in the hole and a crippling alcoholic. I'm going to say, this one's on him. That's not bad advice. I've been out for one before and had a great time. Yeah. As in, you you only had one and went home? Well, both of them. I've been out for one pint, I've had a great pint, and I've gone home. I've also gone out for one pint and ended up having about 40. Yeah. And had a great time. And I'm not an alcoholic. I went home for one pint on like a Friday. Yeah. Did I say I went home for one pint? I did. Yeah. Yep, Sorry. just just home for the solitary <laughs> pint there. I've went out for one pint on like a Friday and came back on the Sunday. But I've never like went out for one pint and actually had one pint, I don't think. I heard that there's an issue with that. It's just I would rather just I don't really see a point in it. You are you sort of a, a cut and dry man? Like it's either no pints or like yeah. twenty. Yeah, yeah, genuinely. It's just, I don't really, because I'm not a huge fan of the taste of the time, so if I'm drinking, it's for the purpose. Yeah, I feel like this is trodden territory here, but beer tastes like arse, yeah. and the only reason you drink it is because it's got booze in it. I That's why the worst me. drink of all time is no alcohol beer. I've started, you're just getting the worst of both worlds. I've started drinking Guinness again, and I know that's a fucking stereotype, the Irish fucker is drinking Guinness, but yeah. genuinely don't mind it. But see, any beers I've tried, I just I can't take to it at all. Like I, I would drink whiskey and vodka all day, but... Yeah. Just nah, not a fan. Yeah, and that's why that's why I'm gonna come back to this. That isn't bad advice. C- come out for one pint because you can do that and have a great time. Yeah. Um, it's just your uh, addictive personality and inability to control uh, your tendencies that has 
made you an alcoholic. Yeah, this isn't on the person that invited him. Yeah. It's not on them. So that's not the worst bit of advice ever. Uh, you just need to um, reevaluate your priorities, I think. Yeah, just have a word with yourself. Yeah. Next up, the worst piece of advice I received was from the government themselves. I think this might be my gran. <laughs> Coming back to paint the windows. Uh, when following the recently implemented 20 zone through the local village, I was reported for suspicious behaviour. A police investigation later revealed I wasn't driving slowly past the school intentionally. I was obeying the law. Right. Don't believe that for a second. This sounds like a nonce trying to make an excuse. <laughs> 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 because all school, past every school is a slow zone and people aren't just getting arrested all day, every day. For yeah. And also, how, how are you... How are you investigating that? I'm clueless in this one, to be honest. Yeah. I don't understand how a police investigation is launched because you drove slowly past the school. You actually do have to touch the kids to... To warrant that? Yeah. To warrant a warrant? I feel like you have to enter the school premises at a minimum. Yeah. Well, as entering a school premises whilst not having any children in the school. Yeah. Like, if you're a mum or something, that's grand. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah. But if you're just going in for a browse, do yeah. some window shopping... That's whenever the, the 5 -oh could be on your back. Speaking about going to a school and not having any kids there, have you been back to your old school? Yeah, but it's because I have two younger brothers that go to it. Right. So that's why, but I haven't just because thought I'd pull up and visit. Occasionally, it would happen at my school. I haven't been back since I left, but people would come back from university and stuff. And suddenly, it's like they're the Wolf of Wall Street. Like they're, they're Lord of the Manor all of a sudden. They're like, look at this place. I used to run this town. Yeah. This used to be, this used to be my... My end, so I used to own this gang. As if they were on Dragon's Den or something. Yeah. I remember in primary school, we'd have people come in for, like, careers day. And yeah. it was literally just people that, like, got their GCSEs. <laughs> <laughs> welders and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Random coal miners. <laughs> have you ever had a careers day person come in and be like, oh, fuck, I don't want to do that. Because we had a fireman come in once. And you think that'd be every kid's dream. But he started talking about it, and I was like, Fuck that. Ah, shit, man. Yeah. I don't want to go into burning buildings all the time. You know what says a lot about, like, my school's career department? Our career teacher was our PE teacher. <laughs> and they just couldn't fill the slot, so he took over and yeah. taught, us career, or they ta taught us careers after. It's like, um, I think the classic is they get the PE teacher to do sex ed. Yeah. But it's just sort of a bloke who's still shagging around himself and he yeah. has zero experience. 100%. I remember our PE teacher once drawing a diagram of how not to get an STI. A diagram? Yeah, he was describing the spread of disease through people. It was basically a sort of STD pyramid scheme. <laughs> As in like if you've got if you got if you shag someone with an STD, now you're at the top of the scheme and then if you shag two more people, and then they both get it mm. and they shag two more people. And then they both the, get the it. It's the trickle down economics. It's trickle down economics. It's, yeah, it's sort of very um Affiliate marketing chlamydia <laughs> diagram. That's the only thing I remember from that class. Yeah. Yeah. I remember our, like this is two of my friends who I'm still like very friendly with. They had, uh, it was the same teacher, but they were covering him for uh, the careers class. This is the, the PE teacher. And do you remember in school where, especially in like the summertime, where people would put their bottle of water in the freezer overnight? Did that uh, happen in your school? Must be a unique, uniquely uh, thing. I don't know if anyone watching done this, but you would basically put your bottle of water in the freezer so the next day at school it's cold all day and you basically just got a fucking bottle of ice. And it got to the stage where it melted down to the point where it was filling up like three quarters of the bottle. And the careers teacher, the person that's meant to be shaping our future, yeah. asked my two friends, he was like pure puzzled at it. And he was like, how'd you get that ice in that bottle? <laughs> no, that's our fucking no, teacher, no. 100%, yeah. And then they both started pissing themselves. <laughs> they both started pissing themselves thinking he's taking oh, the piss so funny. and then he was like no no I don't mean that I don't mean that trying to defend himself oh that's great that's like when you realise that the teachers don't know the answers to any of the fucking questions <laughs> <laughs> right next bit of advice you can do better I in fact cannot <laughs> just a man that knows his limits well, I, I, I respect that yeah and I don't think that's in intrinsically bad advice. It's just more who it goes to yeah. that makes it bad. Because, you know, some people are just proper wastemen. 
I some sometimes you you had a career peak and you're never going to get that back, and that's a sad truth that's faced by a lot of influencers, for example, but also people in reality that shagged someone really hot once mm. on on a chance chance tip scored. Like, you know, Eric Lamella scoring like a... That Rabona? Yeah, scoring that Rabona. It's like, he won the Puskas Award. But apart from that, he is a bang average player. Yeah. So, sorry, mate. It's like, just the the moment before my PE teacher asked about the ice in the bottle. Like, that was his peak. And downhill after that. The exact exact same as Eric Lamella's. And as hard as you try, you just can't... You can't come back from it. it. You've lost everyone's respect. Yeah. Next up, next bit of advice. Don't fuck someone crazy. I ignored the advice. Now I have a child at age 21 and most of my minimum wage is being consumed by child maintenance and nappies. That's just, that is just good advice. Some act of saying about it. Like never stick your dick in crazy. Yeah. That's good advice. So he's totally misunderstood the question because I'm looking for bad advice. Mm. Um, That is very solid advice. And um, I'm 21. Can't, I can't even express in words, how badly I don't want a child. Mm. Can you imagine feeding a child off the, the creator fund? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it might it might um it might spur me on to make better videos. Mm. Like every every day I wake up and I'm sitting down and looking through my list of ideas and going, This one's for those turkey twizzlers. <laughs> if I if I don't do this, we're getting there'll be no dino nuggets next week. <laughs> There were no Bernard Matthews range of turkey dinosaurs and whatnot. Yeah, no Russell's burgers <laughs> for um, Rufus the Second. That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, that is that's Rufus very Rice on brand. The, the Second. Yeah. yeah, I think you can do that. There needs to be a gen. I am technically Aidan Rafferty the Second. Are you? Yeah. So I will. Is that in your name? Have you got a little little two, two, two lines? Yeah, in there? like a fucking king. Yeah, like a king. Um. I will. I am talking to my girlfriend about this regularly that our firstborn son will be called Aiden, just because. Three. Yeah, Aiden the third. Because <laughs> do you know in Iceland where Aiden the third is like <laughs> it's like the least royal sounding title <laughs> since, since Shrek the third. It just sounds like a fucking the, the product like an ancestral family, not a fucking <laughs> royal one. But it's because you know in like Iceland where your surname is, so it's like Aiden yeah. Aidenson. Yeah, I would want my. My child would be Aiden Aidenson Aidenson, I think. Like Bin Laden. Yeah. Is that like... So Bin Bin is son of in ah, Arabic. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like Mohammed bin Sulaim, who's the president of Formula One. Son of... Is son of Sulaim. Right, okay. And his son's going to be called something Bin Mohammed. That's why there's a lot of people called Mohammed Bin Mohammed, because they're unimaginative. <laughs> they just picked the same name again. So would you be Rufus, Rufus Bin Rice? I'd be no, I'd be Rufus Bin Richard because that's my. Oh name. yeah, Rufus Bin Richard. Yeah, so I'd be Aiden Bin Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> I like I almost like. I that don't know. I, don't know. I think that's kind yeah. of you could kind of swag that out. Yeah, yeah. It just sounds like I have been Aiden and will continue to be Aiden. <laughs> Aiden Bin Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, one time I had diabolical diarrhea and my granddad said, "If I go for a run, I'll run it off," and I shat myself mid run. Obviously, that is terrible advice. Yeah. But I think Grandad's played a joke on you there. Yeah, you can't run through that. <laughs> I can't believe you, you picked up on Grandad's advice there. It's an old curry sauce situation in the pants. Yeah. You don't want to be taking... First of all, why are you taking running advice from your Granda? And second of all, why are you taking advice on how to keep the shit inside your body from a, a Granda? Yeah, exactly. That's He's lost that ability man. years ago. Yeah. You and lose- also, like, this is just so, so obvious don't go for a run when you have diarrhea because the jolting from every time your foot hits the floor is obviously going to make yeah. you shit yourself. I can't believe you did this. I, I had it once and I sneezed and it was almost game over. If you're going for a fucking <laughs> run, you're really testing the the muscles of your asshole. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is sneeze whilst you're on the run. Oh, fuck. That would be disastrous. Might turn you inside out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello. It's Gold Feet. It's Gold Feet. Wow. That's incredible. That is incredible news. Thanks so much, mate. Speak soon. Well, I've just had something in, and it's from our sports correspondent, Golfie Sigurdsson. 
This is today's news. Today, of course, being the 4th of January 1960, UEFA has announced the creation of a brand new international football tournament. They've titled it the European Nations Cup, which Golfi has described as a shit name. His words, not mine. He's decided to call it the the Euros. Euros. Well, I'm not sure. I've never seen that word before, so I don't know how you would pronounce it. Could be the Euros. The Euros. Yeah. Could be. I'm sticking with Euros, though. Sounds more plausible. I'm. Ju- that's just how it's spelt. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So here's the format of the new tournament. Do you want to have a guess how many teams there are? I mean, as it's a European tournament, this. I want to say like minimum twenty four. There's four teams. Four teams. Four teams. Yeah. Four. There will be a qualifying stage before the main tournament. Consisting of exactly 17 teams. 17? 17. They really thought that through. (laughs) They really thought that through. I don't know quite how it's going to work. There's going to be one lonely nation who's not going to have a match day. Yeah. I don't know a lot about the qualification process of the the Euros. Euros, yeah. I think having an odd number is never a good start. I don't know. I don't really know about tournaments. I mean, we've never... Really had one apart from those those World Cups, which are so far away, you never get to watch them. Yeah. So, but yeah, but seventeen teams. I don't know. How, maybe that. Ah, maybe one of the matches will be like a three three way. Yeah, just bring in an extra set of nets. Three goals. Yeah. Yeah, it could be it could two see balls. That three goals. <laughs> you need a thirty three no- players. You need another ref yeah. probably just because there'd be a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And then I think it's whoever gets the most points. Goes wins through. the set yeah and then one team gets the trophy yeah that makes sense and it's a two point conversion right after every score we'll check in with golfy after but that i don't even think we have to that seems pretty pretty spot on that's what i'm getting I, that's my guess from this and i've watched a lot of football so yeah, yeah. so after every try they do the ice skates yeah. And then if it goes in the basket, that's one point. Yeah. And if it doesn't, it can go to sudden death. Yeah. Um, There's an elimination round. Mm. Where it's worth double points. Yeah. And if they manage to knock down everything, they can get a strike. Yeah, but you have to go across the big red balls first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to guess where the tournament's going to be held? Uh... France? Yeah, France. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's in France. You, th- I'm you can't about. trust these pricks. No, I think something in the future, I think if events are continued to be held in France, I think something bad's going to happen. Yeah. That's the vibe I get from this. I can't, you can't trust them with anything. And um, that's just case in point because you couldn't even trust them with the fucking maths with the 17 teams in the tournament, <laughs> right? Golfy not <laughs> has said that, in his opinion... It's going to be, and I quote, a shithouse Johnston's paint trophy non-tournament. <laughs> he doesn't believe in it at all. And I have to say that other people do agree. A number of nations have declined to attend the tournament. You want to know who's not going to this ultimate European championship? Who isn't? Germany, England, Italy, and the Netherlands. They've all said, it's not worth our time to go. We're not competing in this. Is it East Germany or West Germany? West Germany. West Germany. The good one, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so they said it's not worth their time to go. And uh, so they've invited fucking Ireland. Did they get through the qualification process? Well, it hasn't happened yet, so... So this is this is basically like a, a B-teams tournament. It's like the under-21s World Cup, I think. Yeah. It's going to be shit. More than likely. And I think this tournament is going to die on its arse. This, there's probably going to be one iteration of this, and then they're never going to revisit this stupid Euros format. No, never. Also, it's, it's like the World Cup, but less prestigious. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to want to win this. It just sounds pretty discriminatory to all the other nations. Yeah, absolute rubbish. It also says at the end of the wire, wire here, cricket's a much better game and that's going to catch on and be big in Europe. Plausible. Plausible as well. have to say, there are some contenders, proper contenders, because there are a couple of decent teams who's going here. Um, but one name that has been hugely bigged up, but I think are just going to flop here, Soviet Union. You know why? Mm. You can't trust their bloody goalie. There's this 
Lev Yashin bloke. Right? I think he's over the hill. He's absolutely washed. And, Sunday uh, league standard at this stage. Sunday league standard. He's basically on a retirement tour like Edgar Davids at Barnet, if you remember him. Being the, <laughs> being the player and the manager with the fucking big glasses on. <laughs> Look like bubbles. Um, yeah, I think... I think he goes down in history as a failure, Levy Ashen. Yeah, there'll never be like a, a card and like a future game about him. He'll never be revered as a legend of the game. Let's just say that. He's going to be forgotten in the books of history. But you know what? who won't be forgotten in the books of history? My winners. I'm picking them to win this tournament. Czechoslovakia. They are looking incredible. What a strong... There's so much teamwork and solidarity in that squad. They really are playing some proper football. The chemistry is there. The communication is unbelievable. And they have this guy, Jerkovic, uh, who's just been... He's a bagsman. He's bagsman. A, he's a proper bagsman. And he's going through a, a patch at the moment. I think Jerkovic might bang a few here against some substandard nations like the Republic of Ireland. And uh, I think they're, they're my pick to win. I don't know. I think regarding Ireland... Especially coming into, you know, like the 70s, 80s, stuff like that. We could be a real powerhouse in the world of football if we just stopped killing each other. Do you think? Yeah. So yeah. There is but I, I see a peaceful future ahead for Ireland. Yeah. Especially, it's sort of things starting to die down, de-escalate. Things I mean, starting to die down. There's going to be just a, you know, a nice period where everybody is acting in harmony and you can just really focus on the footy. Yeah. Yeah. Might even it's end inevitable. up having to play France at some point, like a good team. Yeah. Anyway, so my pick, Czechoslovakia. I think they're an absolute powerhouse, and I think they're going to be around for a while. Yeah, between Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and the Soviet Union, all very big up-and-coming countries with long and bright futures ahead. Yeah. Yugoslavia is a good one to mention, actually, because I think people are going to be... Yugoslavia is the sort of place that they're, they're, they're so good. You know, They're on a hot streak right now. I think people are going to be proud to be from Yugoslavia. Mm. And they're going to be saying for centuries to come, you know, Yugoslavia, that was a golden age. Yeah. I'm going to put this out there. I think I'm better in goal than Lev Yashin. And I've never played goal in my life. But I think humanity has advanced so far since this tournament. I think, put me in the, that Soviet Union 1960 team, I'd be a brick wall. I do a job there. Do you reckon just human evolution has got to a point where yeah. you're just naturally... It's going to be like a Pickford-level performance. I'm going to concede no goals in the whole tournament. I'd stick a tanner on it. I think I think if you, you swap me and Lev Yashin in for this Soviet team and we win the Euros... Yeah, without that, you're I'm, I'm not, to come I'm forth. I'm not even really joking. Because mm. obviously if you put a proper goalkeeper in... like I reckon even Ben Foster, retired Ben Foster, would, is probably better in goal than Lev Yashin, right? Mental. <laughs> yeah. But you have to agree with that. I do, yeah. Have you seen the footage? He's rubbish. <laughs> he's he's crap. Mate, he's like he's like wearing um he's wearing a cardigan. You can't keep him that. <laughs> he's wearing like breeches and and boots. He looks like a miner. <laughs> I swear he's wearing a hat like yours when he's keeping. <laughs> I reckon I'm better than him. Just give me some modern gear. And like a week of instruction, and I'll be a wall in that Soviet team. Also, that ball is is so heavy; it it moves like a boulder. Like it's so slow. Yeah, imagine getting a hand behind it though. Oh yeah, it would apps probably break you. <laughs> probably yeah. break you. Break your palm. Now, as is traditional on this program, we end with our musical serenade. This one's called Handy. Well, I said that I was going out for one or two Now I'm drunk at half past four You volunteered to host the afters So we all came back to yours Now it's unfair to call you a monster But you're a 6.3 at best But it's late, I'm out of options so I'll take what I can get Darling, I'll call you fit I'll even lick your flat Just give me a handy You can have my snack Oh darling, I'll kiss you deep If you just
just toss me up Just give me a handy Before I go so And then you'll be there Tugging for me Oh, you'll be there Tugging for me Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Back to you in the studio.